Hey guys, welcome back to another Final Cut Pro X tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to make this transition effect. So as you can tell, all I've got so far is just this. It's what I start out with. But you're probably wondering how I got this small thing. Okay, well all I did was hold down the Option button, which duplicated that. Then I bladed it. But I only had this. And of course I don't need this, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it. Place this one back, which I always like working separately, like that. Where I have the transition effect on top and the normal on the bottom, just in case there's an opacity problem. So let me line that up where it belongs. So, obviously it's not very good right now. So I'm going to go through it and look for you see I can't have this clip because it's past the edge so I'm gonna go back and this one's pretty good so I'm gonna trim it down which right now it's obviously not long enough is it so I'm going to pick that go back one frame press hold and then how long do I think I should I think this should be about so right now I've got this isn't much better. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the frame right before this. I'm gonna go down here, choose opacity 100, transform add, and add keyframes to distort as well. Okay, and make sure I've got keyframes for everything. And I'm going to go to the last frame right there. And yes, I'm gonna have to distort this. So I'm going to go to about 50%, which probably isn't big enough, so I'll go to 25. I'll go to distort, and I'm going to try to make this fit inside the square. It's just going to be a little tough, but be okay. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit harder for you people that have never done this before, but you should have it down pat in a little bit doesn't take super long but you do have to make sure that it's right so yeah that looks pretty good pretty fast too so now we've got this which is already better and obviously it looks a little bit different but that's okay so I'm gonna go to the last frame right there. I'm going to go down to opacity, bump it down to like 10. And you can see that it doesn't line up perfectly, but that's okay. So I'm going to quickly go through the opacity. I think I still want that to be 100. I think I want that one to be about 90. And I like that so far. So that's all we have so far, which is looking pretty decent. Now, it doesn't match up perfectly, so I'm going to add a small color correction to make it look a little bit better. I'm going to drop down some of the exposure a little bit, drop down some of the shadows, bring that up just a bit. Um, I think it's got too much blue. So, it's beginning to look more like that, which obviously not going to stay in depth, but it already looks better as you can tell. Before, after, before, after. Now it looks more like that, which this isn't a color correcting tutorial, so I'm not going to spend much time on that. So, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to blur, go to zoom, and drop the zoom on top. So you're going to want to go to the last frame. You want to rank up the zoom and have it, you know, close to the middle. Like that. Yes. You're going to go to the next one. That's going to have a bunch of zoom too. Less zoom. Less zoom. And, and 
down here, not going to be much zoom. Maybe just a tip. So that we can have some. Oh, that's it. I forgot to add the keyframe. No wonder it's looking so strange. Okay, add. Bump it up. So obviously you're probably thinking, well, that doesn't look too realistic right now. Trust me, it's going to look a lot better. And just a little bit of zoom so that it's blurry throughout. The last thing I'm going to do is go and add some zoom on the bottom layer as well. So like right there. Maybe there, yeah. I'm gonna add just a bit of zoom. Don't forget the keyframe, then no zoom. On the next one, I'm gonna go back the frames. I'm gonna bump up the zoom to match the other one. And I'm gonna bump up the zoom even more. So that you barely see it, and boom. So now, this is what it looks like. Which is much better than it was. So that's how you make a cool transition effect from going outside a computer to the inside of the computer if you're screen recording. If you have any more tutorials, drop them down below. Any comments, just drop them down. I'll feel free and I'll do my best to answer the questions. Leave a like, subscribe, and thank you for watching.